Hey there, welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. For all you new subscribers that have watched this shovel for the last four videos, it's been pretty cold around here, about negative 30 for the last four days, so we decided we're doing a video indoors. Today, we're gonna make root beer for about 16 cents a bottle. Now, we make homemade root beer for two reasons. One, we're cheap, and two, we're cheap. <laughs> and three, I don't have to shovel any snow or try to start any engines at 30 below. Okay, three reasons. <laughs> Let me show you the equipment that we need. This is a five gallon bucket with a spout at the bottom. You could just use any old food grade five gallon bucket. Doesn't have to be a fancy one like this. We have it full of five gallons of lukewarm water. We're gonna need some bottles. You can purchase bottles if you want, but we just ask our friends to give us their old bottles. We have a couple of different styles um, and we have lots and lots of cases of bottles downstairs. Well, cause we collect lots of stuff and we have lots of really good friends, so. If you're doing 16 ounce bottles, you'll need about 40 bottles. Or if you're doing 12 ounce bottles, you'll need about 53 bottles. So we got a couple cases of bottles over there. We'll see how many we get today. Now we're gonna use two and a half pounds of sugar. The original recipe calls for three or four pounds of sugar, but we don't like to put as much sugar in stuff as most people do. So for us, two and a half pounds, but you might like a little sweeter. Around here, we're paying about 84 cents for a pound of sugar. So that adds into my calculation. We also need some bottle caps. These are just regular old brewers bottle caps. We buy them on Amazon. We pay about four and a half cents a piece for them. I'll leave links in the description below for all the things uh, that you might want to purchase if you want to purchase them. Also, you're going to need the root beer extract. Now, this is a Zatarain's four ounce root beer extract. It's a very delicious one, actually. Um, and I buy them in bulk, 12 at a time and I pay around $3 a bottle for them. Now, I think because of the alcohol content, I can't actually get Amazon to ship them to Alaska, but I have a lovely friend in Indiana and she let me ship it to her house and then she shipped it up to me. So I appreciate you. But if you buy it on Amazon right now, I just checked, um, it's on sale. You can get 12 bottles for 32 bucks and have free shipping. So that's pretty good. And this four ounce bottle is gonna make us five gallons of root beer. That's a lot. Almost enough. Almost enough. <laughs> okay, we also need a bottle capper. I think if you wanted to buy one of these, I think they're, what, 20 bucks? Something like that. Unless you find them at a thrift store for $3. Unless you find it at the thrift store like we did for $3. Um, now, I didn't calculate the price of this bottle capper um, in my calculation today because we've used this guy a million times and uh, his depreciation has well ran out by now, so. <laughs> okay, there's one more ingredient that you need. You need a packet of beer yeast, but we use whatever we have. Um, this is a white wine yeast. We've used champagne yeast before. When I was a kid, my mom actually used regular old baking yeast um, to make root beer in it. I wouldn't recommend it. My brother and I used to scrub out the 55 gallon trash can and fill it up with water and sugar and root beer extract and yeast. And uh, yep, that's how we made root beer when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, I still have nightmares, but, but it'll work, it'll work. This is just a little bit of warm water from our bucket. We're just gonna put our yeast in there. We don't have to add sugar or anything else in there to get it going. Um, we just wanna dissolve the yeast in there before we dump it in the bucket. But first I need an opener. Okay, do. You got an opener? I always have an opener. You're awesome. Thanks, friend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll just get that all mixed up so it can dissolve. We'll set it aside for a moment. This is super easy, guys. Sugar. Bye-bye. <laughs> Root beer. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> now. Story, story. Yeast. Yep. I better find it. Okay. okay, I got the big spoon. So now you just mix it up and you mix it till all that sugar's dissolved. Okay, now here's our secret optional ingredient. We are gonna put a little bit of homemade vanilla in there. Mm. I don't know, that much. Maybe an eighth of a cup, okay? But if you don't have that, don't put it in there. But it makes it like a little bit of a cross between a root beer and cream soda. How's it smell, Mr. Reed? Awesome. Yeah, it does. <laughs> It literally took us three minutes to get that all dumped in and mixed up, so now we fill the bottles. Now, filling up your bottles is very easy. You just have to remember to leave enough room for your carbonation gases to build up in the top. So what that means for us is on these shorter, stubby bottles, 
right at the top of the shoulder is where we're going to stop. And on a regular bottle, we're going to stop right at the base of the neck. Now we have this bucket that already has the spigot in it and that makes it super easy for us to fill up our bottles. But if you didn't have that, it's just as easy to just get yourself a funnel and a ladle or a funnel and a measuring cup and fill them right up that way. Now we set it aside for Miss Crystal and she gets the cap on it. Okay, now for the capping. This bottle capper has a little magnetic tip there inside the cap well, and that just helps the cap stay put when you put it on your bottle. So you put it on the bottle, you put the little magnet side on your cap, and you try to pull down on each side equally. There you go. All done. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, now this bottle's a little bit different. It doesn't have a neck on it, and if you bear down on it really hard with the capper all the way through, these, this part of the capper pushes on the shoulder and doesn't allow a good seal. So, I put the cap on, and then I'm just really gentle when I get the capper in place, and I wait till it these two pieces come together before I really start pushing down on it. There. Otherwise, the cap won't go on, and then you have problems. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep filling and capping, and then we'll meet you back in just a second and show you what the next step is. more than they say we get. I know, we did good. <laughs> okay, so now you're supposed to let it sit in the sun for an hour to kind of get it going. But uh, we live in Alaska and yesterday was the shortest day of the year. So I think today the sun came up at around, ooh, 10.30 and went down around uh, 3.30. So, wah, wah. yeah, wah, wah. So no sun for us. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to put these back in their boxes. We're going to turn them on their sides so they have a less chance of risk of exploding, right? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. And then we're just going to let it sit where it's warm, just regular room temperature. We like it to let it sit for about two days to build up carbonation. But if you're going by the instructions, you let it sit in the sun for an hour, and then you let it sit at room temperature for 24 hours. And then... You open it up, see if you like the carbonation, and we'll taste test. It'll be two days for us, but just a moment for you. Okay, y'all, it's been two and a half days. Now, we tried one of our root beers at two days, and it wasn't quite there, and that's what you're going to do. Once you try your root beer after a day, if it doesn't have enough carbonation, maybe just wait just a little bit longer, maybe wait a whole another day, another half a day. For us, it was close but not there, so we waited for another half day, and now we're ready to try again. But I got to tell you all a cool little tip from Miss Crystal. If you don't want to spend the extra nickel on these caps every time you test it to make sure it has the right carbonation, what you can do is when you're filling your bottles, if you will take for your last one or two bottles some pint jars and some old canning lids and put the last couple of jars worth in those, you don't have to waste a couple of caps while you're testing to make sure the carbonation is right. And a lot of y'all are just going to throw away these canning lids anyway. So, this one apparently was from, from some gravy that we made. So let's see how it how it is right now. Ooh. All right. If you look at that right there, you can see we got some great bubbles going. Let's see. That's perfect. All right, now that is the perfect carbonation, but maybe not the perfect taste. And let me tell you why, and this is important. The reason that you want to use your last couple of bottles worth as your testers is because that's where the little bits of yeast and stuff on the bottom are going to end up. See all this white stuff that's on the bottom? 
that's the yeast. So the taste isn't going to be perfect, but it'll give you a good indication of what your carbonation is going to be. And the reason that you want to test those ones is because all the ones left are going to be way sweeter and way yummier, and you're going to love it, and those will be the good ones to give away to your friends. Now here's the really important part. Once you get the carbonation level where you want it, you need to get these root beers out of room temperature and into the refrigerator where they'll stay cool, because if you don't, they're going to keep fermenting and they're going to keep building up pressure. We once forgot one case of it right here in the living room. Luckily, it was in a box because when the bottles exploded, glass didn't go everywhere. You don't want that problem and we don't want you to have that problem. So if you're off grid, you got a nice root cellar cold room, that's a great spot because you're going to have about four cases of it. If you don't, make room in your fridge, but you won't have to for long because it's so good, it's going to disappear fast. I hope you all enjoyed our root beer making video. I certainly enjoyed making it. I wasn't outside in the cold shoveling snow. We'll see you next time.